You know what they ought to do? They ought to release the J6 hostages. They've suffered enough. I have concerns about the treatment of January 6 hostages. Um, the Republicans released hundreds and hundreds of hours of TV from mm -hmm. January 6. They've had months to examine it. They have not come up with a single shot which uh, purports to capture an Antifa fighter or an FBI agent uh, inciting the insurrection. Nothing. Uh, and yet they're still out there spreading their propaganda and disinformation about how it was uh, really Antifa and FBI agents, which, of course, would make it strange to uh, argue that all these people should be released and Trump's going to pardon them. This is Donald he... Trump, who is uh, a huckster, a ripoff artist. Damn! It was a tale of two rallies over the weekend, with Biden giving what many have described as his most notable and poignant speech to date. And Trump, well, he repeated all the same hits. The election was stolen, January 6th was a setup, even though I just said in a previous rally Nancy Pelosi was to blame and didn't send in the soldiers that he recommended, which would then contradict his past theory. Why would soldiers be needed for a tourist visit? First time in our history, insurrectionists had come to stop a peaceful transfer, transfer of power in America. Millions of people are storming the United States. When you talk about insurrection, what they're doing, that's, that's the real deal. That's the real deal, not patriotically and peacefully. Trump's mob wasn't a peaceful protest. It was a violent assault. Release the J6 hostages, Joe. Release them, Joe. Trump's assault on democracy isn't just part of his past. It's what he's promising for the future. Anyway, the juxtaposition was clear to see and expertly outlined by Jamie Raskin as he joined Jen Psaki to discuss. Not only outlining the clear differences between speeches. For me and Kamala, our campaign is about America. It's about you. First they say, sir, how do you do it? How do you wake up in the morning and put on your pants? Look at the authoritarian leaders and dictators Trump says he admires. President Xi of China, strong, smart, Tough. Putin liked me. I liked I got along. I got along with Kim Jong-un. Saddam Hussein. And I will say, they hung that sucker and he spit right in their face. But, you know, tough guy. When he visited the cemeteries, called dead soldiers suckers and losers. But John McCain, for some reason, couldn't get his arm up that day. Remember, he goes... And we just have to go out and educate America about what actually has happened and trust in the good common sense of the people that they will recognize in Joe Biden, um, you know, an honorable public servant who's been devoted to the common good his entire life uh, versus Donald Trump, who is uh, a huckster, a ripoff artist, a compulsive liar and a danger to the republic. But Trump's own contradictions on January 6th. Well, the, obviously, it's a major insult and affront to the families of uh, actual hostages still being held by Hamas uh, in, uh, in Gaza right now. But look, um, something struck me yesterday. Uh, it was sort of the dog that didn't bark. Um, the Republicans released hundreds and hundreds of hours of TV uh, uh, security tape from mm -hmm. January 6th. They've had months to examine it. They have not come up with a single shot which uh, purports to capture an Antifa fighter or an FBI agent uh, inciting the insurrection. Nothing. Uh, and yet they're still out there spreading their propaganda and disinformation about how it was uh, really Antifa and FBI agents, which of course would make it strange to uh, argue that all these people should be released and Trump's going to pardon in them. Why would he want to pardon all these Antifa fighters? So there's no logic in their presentation. It really is characteristic of what you get from authoritarian and fascist political parties. And this seems to be par for the course for Republicans, as Elise Stefanik was given free reign during a Marshmallow interview where she described insurrectionists as, wait for it, hostages. Laterally, on the issue of election integrity, though, as you know, Trump took his case to court more than 60 times that there was fraud. He didn't win. But I I want to get back to this key question. Do you still think it was a tragic day? Do you think 
that the people who stormed the Capitol should be held responsible to the full extent of the I law. I have concerns about the treatment of January 6 hostages. Uh, I have concerns. We have a role in Congress of oversight over our treatments of prisoners. Uh, and I believe that we're seeing the weaponization of the federal government against not just President Trump, but we're seeing it against conservatives. We're seeing it against Catholics. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so proud to serve on the Select Committee on the Weaponization of the Government, because the American people want answers. And that is undemocratic and it's shredding our constitution. And you know who agrees with me, Kristen? The American people. That's why President Trump is winning in poll after poll. Which again follows suit with the Republican strategy of distorting and whitewashing that day's event, all while contradicting themselves. First, it was a tourist visit. We were asked the question by several of our colleagues, including Ms. Cheney, um, about statements that you made saying that the January 6th violent insurrection against Congress was akin to a normal tourist visit. Do you agree or disagree with the officers who spent four or five hours battling that medieval mob that had baseball bats and lead pipes and so on? Do you stand by the statement that the people that they were fighting were tourists or would you agree with them that they were terrorists? Then it was Pelosi's fault for not bringing in the National Guard to deal with said tourists. Why would you need the National Guard to deal with tourists if they weren't doing anything? He repeated his false claim that Nancy Pelosi had been in charge of Capitol security on January 6, 2021. That is false, as is his claim that Pelosi rejected an offer of 10,000 National Guard troops that he made. There was no evidence he even made the offer. Pelosi says she never received such an offer. And in fact, it is Donald Trump, the president of the, of the United States, who had the authority to uh, order the National Guard to the Capitol. And it was an inside job, but let's pardon said inside job defendants. FBI can't find the pipe bomber? This is ridiculous. This shows you that the FBI doesn't care about finding the pipe bomber because they know exactly who the pipe bomber is. And they use their resources and your hard-earned tax dollars to go after people because they support Trump and they were mad about the election of 2020 and these people walked in the Capitol. You see, this should never happen. The federal government should never be weaponized against the people and set up honeypots and traps to draw people in and, and actually take part in making these people commit crimes and then framing the people to set up a narrative against a president it's wrong. And I believe that's what happened on January 6th. Why would you want to pardon Antifa and BLM if they were the ones responsible? And now it's hostages. I mean, how deranged are these people? The answer, very, and gullible. President Trump has talked about uh, uh, pardoning many of the people on day one who uh, were involved in the assault on the Capitol. Uh, I think, frankly, that's a mistake for him. It Hence why Trump himself sends out videos like this with a full chest, knowing they'll digest it with a spoonful of migrant caravan fear-mongering. And on June 14th, 1946, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God gave us Trump. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, fix this country, work all day, fight the Marxists, eat supper, then go to the Oval Office and stay past midnight at a meeting of the heads of state. So God made Trump. I need somebody with arms, strong enough to rustle the deep state, and yet gentle enough to deliver his own grandchild. Somebody to ruffle the feathers, tame cantankerous World Economic Forum. And people want Biden to reach across the aisle, there is no reaching for people willfully living in the sunken place. They care not for facts, which is why everything is malleable to them, no matter how many court orders prove the fact that the election was not stolen. The legal path just took Trump back to the truth, that I had won the election and he was a loser. We're gonna win for the third time and I just don't want the results of the second. No matter how many times they contradict themselves over January 6th, no matter how many positive reports on the economy to the point that their cult leader is now trying to take credit for it after months of claiming that we were barreling towards a recession. The nation is running on the fumes of the great success of the Trump administration. They're just running on the fumes of what we did with the tax cuts and the regulation cuts. Without us, this thing would have crashed to levels never seen before. Good news. 
Gas prices are down, stocks are hitting all-time highs, and consumer confidence is starting to rebound. And as the holiday shopping season enters the home stretch, people seem to be feeling pretty jolly about the economy. The Consumer Confidence Index rose to more than 110 points. That's the highest number since July. The employers adding 216,000 jobs in December, up from the 175,000 that economists expected. The jobless rate remains at 3.7 percent. 36 months of job growth. Right. I think 20 plus of sub 4 percent unemployment as we stay at 37 um yeah i mean that's too much 2.7 million jobs added in the full year I mean, it's just a, it, it's a great economy and there's nothing about you can do about it it's a great economy i know it's tiring outlining this over and over trust me but we must never tire from telling the truth because democracy depends on it this is who did Donald Trump fight for, for the four years he was president? He accomplished two things. An extremist Supreme Court so that politicians, instead of women, would make decisions about abortion. And the second was a $2 trillion tax break, mostly for billionaires and millionaires and giant corporations. What has Joe Biden been fighting for, for his time in office? $35 insulin, Medicare drug negotiation, trying to cut student loan debt, uh, get rid of junk fees, biggest climate package literally in the history of the world and paid for by my 15% minimum corporate tax on billionaire corporations profit. Thanks so much for watching. We're only a few subscribers short of 2 million subs. Please subscribe right now to the Midas Touch YouTube channel for free and help us grow this unapologetically pro-democracy network.